off. Today is day 316 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on with project number five, the random user generator. We have made lots of progress. We still have a bit of ways to go. Um, tonight we're going to kind of focus on the basic CSS um, updates. So here is our example project. This, this is who we want to be one day. Not, not specifically Josephine, but the, uh, as far as developer skills though, we, we want to craft something like this. So here is what we currently have. Copy, 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 and we paste, ta-da, this is where we're at. We can click on the following, pretty damn cool, even by my standards. Um, actually, you know, my standards are probably lower, but I think it's awesome. So, we should also probably crack open the developer console. JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And from here, what else do we need? I think we're pretty good. Oh, the extra credit stuff. I think we're going to save the extra credit stuff for another day. The, again, the last couple days have just been an uphill battle trying to, to piece everything together on the JavaScript side. I mean, we we did pretty good. I mean, everything's functional now. We got all the core essentials, so that's that's good. Um, now we get to start doing some of the CSS stuff. It's It's lacking. We got our HTML all sorted out, JavaScript. Again, there's a little bit of room on, on both of those where we can push those, but not, not a whole lot going on on the CSS front. So that's, we just get to sort of hang out, tinker with this for a bit, and um, more magic to come tomorrow. Hey, Toasty, how are you doing? Good morning to you, sir. Or I guess good evening to us. But uh, yes, yeah, how, how's your day going? Hopefully awesome so far. Um... You probably overheard us ranting for, for a bit as we commence our stream. Well, let's see, what else do we want to do before we start chipping away at, at CSS nonsense? Clearly, we could go basically in any direction. Ah, you know what, I, do, I want to do a once-over on where we currently stand on the project. So, yet again... Random user generator. We use an asynchronous JavaScript and XML Ajax to access an API endpoint and parse the response. Since there are multiple methods, you will gain experience with Ajax via XML, HTTP requests, XHR objects, the HTML5 fetch API, Axios, and jQuery, which by the way, the last three were infinitely easier to implement. Look at this. That's fetch. Here's Axios and jQuery, all right there, you know, like a, a little family of sub-25 lines of code for all three, no, not, not XHR, he's, he's a hungry one, this is, there's a lot of, a lot of XHR, nothing wrong with that, just took a, took a bit of time to set up, that is all, that is all, more, more fun to be experienced with, which I'm glad I, I went with XHR to set up that first, because um, that would have been a rude awakening after the other three to end on XHR. That would have been a very sad day. Continuing on, though, reflecting. Uh, sure, in a real-world application, you wouldn't use every possible AJAX method for requesting data asynchronously, but I think it's important to learn each method to find each of their strengths and downfalls and I'm glad we did get to experience all four of those. This is, this was very insightful. 
in with those three. Now, resources. We really haven't had to tinker with those too much as we, we just really link to them in our HTML, but nevertheless, uh, we use the Axios and jQuery links there and specifications. We were able to knock out the basic structure, I think within the first day, setting up the core buttons down here. I'm just seeing if reading through any of the instructions will inspire me to add any particular styling effects uh, and just kind of reflect on where we currently stand as a whole in case I missed anything. Toasty, sorry, just noticed your, your question. Uh, you learn about uh, JS promises? Not yet. I mean, I know they exist. JS promises are essentially unicorns to, to me right now. I've got a general idea. I, I know people have talked about them, but I've yet to encounter a, a JavaScript promise in the wild. So I'll need to do some research, find a good place to find a JavaScript promise and how to implement it. But it is out there. I know, apparently they're effective and handy, and it's something that I should look into. So it is definitely on my to-do list. Go team promises. Woo. That, that'll be us one day. Uh, but currently, this uh, all of our, especially the XHR stuff, just vanilla JavaScript through, uh, through all of this. Yeah, real special. That was, that was a good long two and a half days, maybe three. Don't really want to relive that again, but uh, we did it. We did it. That is a notch, notch in our belt that we can be proud of. Uh, Toasty, Fetch and Axios are working with promises. If that was your code, you already uh, implemented them. Oh. Huh. I had no idea then maybe I've seen a unicorn in real life and didn't realize it then. <laughs> On a totally separate note. Um, good to know. So there's promise stuff going on in there. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't be able to point at which, which portion of the function is the promise. There was a general flow to all of them. The, uh, the get and then the dot then, and then some other stuff happening. See, there's the, the get, and then some other noise. All three, I did notice all three kind of had a similar, similar feel. Fetch, dot then, and whatnot. Uh, Toasty, sorry for typos on mobile right now. Oh, that's totally fine. Totally fine. We love typos. Typos are sustenance for, for us. That's... Welcome. Bring on the typos. What are we doing? Ah, oh, right. We were reflecting on the overall guidelines to see if it would trigger and suggest any any uh, stylization recommendations and uh, whatnot. So we knocked out the resources. Beautiful specifications. Your page should include four buttons. Okay. I kind of want to do four distinct buttons. I know here they're all down here, which is, it is kind of nice that they're all the same color because it indicates that it'll return all the same result. You know, a different user, but a different way. Kind of cool. I feel like I might want to just have maybe even structured buttons. I don't know. We'll get there. We will get there. Uh, anyways, when a button is clicked, you will use a specified method for requesting a random user from the following API endpoint, randomuser.me, which we have successfully done now. Upon receiving a response from the API, you will need to parse the JSON data and display the following user information. The style is up to you. Be creative. I do like the layout of Topher's example project. 
It's nice. It's straightforward, clean. We even set up our code in general to kind of follow that same sort of path and flow. I don't know if we will change it by much, but it will probably be slightly different. Um, I don't know if that'll be due to creative choice or lack of skill. Probably cl closer to lack of skill, but uh, we'll try and get as creative as we can. Profile picture, full name, username, location, age, gender, email, and nationality. I know nationality is unique because of extra credit stuff. Instead of just text for the user's nationality, display their native flag. These flag icons may come in handy. Let's check out where flags live. Flag icon CSS. We clicked on this link before. Oh, that's right. We were ashamed to play the fl uh, the flag quiz game because, yes, as as an American citizen who endured public school, we are just we're awful at geography. True, not everyone is that that gets to experience your your generic American public school, but yeah, I mean, I'd say the the majority of us couldn't couldn't tell you ninety nine percent of these, and of the flags we could point to, they're probably residing within the United States. Yeah, that's that's kind of what the truth looks like. Uh, continuing on to Cody issues. Add transitions between newly generated random users. We really haven't done that aside from... Did we do a fade in the last one? I can't remember what we did with the last one. Okay, okay. Calculate the amount of time that elapses while a new user is being created and display the information as user generated in n seconds whoa 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 oh, that's what's happening at the bottom of his calculate the amount of time that elapses while a new user is being generated and display the information as user generated in n seconds right 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 i see that's what this is. I mean, I saw that when you click on it, it tells you the time, but I didn't realize that was really, it now is sinking in that that was part of the extra credit stuff. Cool, cool. So, I think we're going to worry about the flag bit another day. Today is just going to be general styling. How do we want to space all this noise out? I think we should be okay. All right. We have a whole flock of divs to juggle here. And to line them up, hey, Saucy Clouds and Yum Yum, how you guys doing? We are tinkering. We're trying to make my my project program slightly less generic and a little less sad looking it's kind of kind of basic you know what it's like 12 notches below kind of basic but that's we we got to start somewhere so what to do first things first probably change font type that's what i'm thinking we should change the font type to make it something more fun we should do <laughs> div main font. Yeah, div main font. Font. Da family. Sans serif. Ooh, or monospace. Monospace look like.
Oh, that didn't help. Oh, wait. Yes, it will. Interesting. So that's mono space. Cursive. What's fan? Let's do fantasy. Save, save, save. Refresh. Ah, cool. Look at this. And what else do we have here? Inherit. Oh, to inherit the property. Hmm. No. I think cursive would be a bit much for this. Kind of unnecessary. We want it to be legible, which is why I was thinking sans serif. Sans serif is just to go to web. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of flair going on here. No, 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 no. No written across the board. Absolutely not. This is crazy talk. That's not helping anybody. Doing sans serif. Okay, okay, out of the gates. We've got this. It's clean. We can find a more clever font later, but in the meantime, it's going to be sans serif. <sighs> All right, okay. Things to do random user generator. I'm thinking like a. Like a gray, maybe a blue. Like a like a dark, dark teal. Let's see. Uh, the thing to do is click on the element. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. And I could have sworn they had a color wheel picker built in to the console. Wasn't that a thing? I thought we were using that before. Maybe I'm crazy. I thought we were able... Maybe it was font color... No, wait, 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 wait. I need to be... It's because I'm in the HTML doc. That's why. I need to be looking at the CSS doc. Toasty. Yes, but you have to set a color first. Good call. Good call. Uh, color zero zero, and then there's a color wheel. Noted. Noted. Will do. Will do. Good call, Toasty. Color. Black. Yari. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Nice. Nice. Uh, Toasty, the console is HTML and CSS combined. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Now, I'm looking for... We should space this out and give them different sizes. How do I want to break them apart? My concern here is that I can style each div individually or collectively as, you know, a couple groups. But I think I may want to stack some divs together. Kind of like Tofers, we've got the name, username, and their location is grouped together. And then we've got gender, age, and their email also grouped together elsewhere. And then what not below. And I know I could I could further group all of the divs within a couple other divs. Right now it's just one massive, massive list of nonsense and info. 
I think let's just keep doing some basic styling before we go doing any major, major, uh, major organizational structural changes. Toasty. <laughs> uh, toasty. Looks like the typical Nathan Margaret from Canada. It is a random, random user generator. But yes, you know, because that's, that's Nathan Margaret. Uh, <laughs> dear God, too funny. <laughs> and, and they're 53. He looks amazing for 53. But we've we've had quite a few interesting interesting people pop up. Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> uh toasty. Too funny. Okay. What am I that totally totally threw my focus off? Um info. One, two, three. No, color for the H one. Ah, H one would be the following. Uh, color. Mm, blue. Sort of generic. But that's because I just want access to the color wheel. H1. Wasn't there... Should have been a color, right? Oh, right here. Cool. Have they changed the color wheel on this recently? <laughs> Toasty <laughs> might be a case of identity theft. Yeah, that... that that is exactly what identity theft looks like. <laughs> okay, blue stuff. Maybe a... Uh... Mm... What says random user? Dim 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 do a dark oh I know what to do right here yeah well just like so no, 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 that stupid profile icon is in the way. It is, it is blocking. There we go, that's better. Yeah, kind of grayish green. Just before it gets dark. Not so gray that it's sickly. But just right, right there. Like sleepy tree green. That's what we want. Beautiful. Okay, okay. Sleepy tree green for our, our header. And then... Crap, I need to bring this number over. Oh no, I can... Can I copy it? Is there a... There's an easy way to copy this? Copy, copy, copy. We're gonna smash this color right in here. Save, save, save. Okay, one thing down. Do we want to use Sleepy Tree Green for generate user? Wow, look at the pixel magnifier. Can you guys see that? Maybe you could. Maybe it moves when I go to zoom out. I think you guys can probably see that. Maybe you can't. I want to check and see if I can see that on the stream. Don't mind me. This is going to be like a... Uh, a, a briefish delay. Hold on. Hold on. 
There's no way you guys can see that. We're right. Oh, I don't think you guys can see that. We're hovering over the G, and there's this cool magnifier thing, and I can see all the individual pixels. Oh, I don't think it's showing up on the stream. Damn. Well, it's magnificent. We're right over... Yeah, no, the, uh, the... Oh, boo, you can't see it. Death? I'm gonna take a photo of it. That way I have proof that I'm not crazy. Well, I mean, different type of crazy. E, D. That's a photo of that, and we'll do another photo of the S. I think that'll be easier to distinguish over the interwebs. Cool, cool. Check this out. Bump up the brightness. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. Right? Let me go to OBS. When you hover over with the color wheel, it shows you... So I'm hovering over the G... And there's the color wheel picker. Or like, not color wheel picker, but a magnifying glass, and it's so cool. You can see like, pixel per pixel, so it's actually like black at its core. And then there's red and beige and gray and some green. All just for black. Who would have known? Light blues and, and whatnot. Kind of impressive, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Uh, anyways, back into to Twitch stuff. Let's chop the brightness down on our screen. That way we don't burn our retinas. Uh, when you set quality to 140, uh, 144p, you can see the pixels. Like As my monitor, it's a whole 8-bit coding. Just massive pixel blocks. Not exactly what we're looking for, but yes, that is a thing. Da -da -da -dee 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 -dee. That was uh that was quite the tangent regarding absolutely nothing. Um shiny colors. Easily distracted. Now what are we doing? Uh we've got our common We've got a, a general header color. And we can use that for the following. When we click on someone's name, save, save, save. Refresh. Do we want black for their names? I think we should have their name bolded. And I think this is where we can start getting into the div IDs. So that was full name, if I'm not mistaken. That will be font... I always forget what bold is under. It's font weight, isn't it? I, I think it should be under style. I'm so used to thinking it, thinking that bold is under style because of, you know, whatever word processor, whether it's the window, uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs or whatnot. You've always got bold, italic, and underline, and pretty sure there's style something somewhere around there. So I always think of it as style, but it's font weight, which is bold. That has been one of the difficult things to overcome during this year of learning to code. It's something basic, but it's slightly frustrating. Save, 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 and refresh, clickety-click, cool, bolded name, and let's do two M's. Toasty, there are different shades of font weight, that's why it, that's why it got its own attribute, I think. Interesting. Yeah, because they do have a whole flock of other nonsense pop up when you're typing out 400 and bolder, lighter, whatnot. 
I mean, it seems like they've got plenty of aspects or, or values to, to fill its own category. But that's all. <laughs> what am I doing? M's. M's. We're looking for M's. So this would be font size. And let's go with two M's out of the gate. Save, save, save. Refresh. Clickety click. Wow, two's kind of large. Let's do 1.5. That might be slightly less hilarious. Refresh. Clickety clack. Kirk Reynolds. That's better. That's more comforting. Although, if all of these are going to be increased in size... No, 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 it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We can do, like, 1.25 for the rest of them. Just two seemed a bit much compared to the, the title size or width, whatever we want to call it, font size. So 1.25, most likely, for the rest of these dudes. Username... We can probably do a brighter green or more gray. Let's do let's do the following. Let's do the following. Um D D D D D D D username will be dot user name. If I recall correctly. And here we will do font style to italicize it. Alex and uh, font size to 1.25. You think that's going to be too weird? Should I just do 1.2? I don't think it matters. I don't think anyone gives a damn. Uh, save, save, save. Refresh and click. Purple butterfly. I don't know how I feel about purple butterfly. We might have to do 1.2. Save, save, save. Refresh. Yeah, yeah, definitely 1.2. That's the right answer for sure. So that's, that's that. Now, the country will become the flag. So I, I'm not too worried about trying to stylize their, uh, their nationality just yet. Or not their country, yeah, their, their nationality. So the nationality is going to come from the flag database, but we're going to implement that probably tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait till we get our first person from Albania. That is such an awesome flag. You know what? I didn't realize Samoa had such an epic flag either. Oh no, this is a slippery slope. We're going to spend two hours looking at flags. No, 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 no. We need to abort this before I get hooked on steering, looking at cool flags. Let's back out of that. We, we know ourselves. No. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, toasty purple butterfly is effing beautiful, right? Yeah, it, it was. It was good. And, and Green Mouse, 539. These are all great names. Although, <laughs> brown fish is <laughs> visually concerning in my mind, but everyone's got their own, own imagination. Yellow ostrich, that sounds fun or sickly, not too sure. Uh, okay, okay. Something about this now. What would I do? We can get some inspiration. See, I was thinking gray too, although not font so small. I don't want to... Although, Newfoundland and 
Labrador. That's, we can't exactly set that to two M's because that's going to wrap around the screen. So I guess we need to factor in gigantic country names and locations. So I guess we have to give it a smaller font so it doesn't look as hilarious. You know what we can do? We can bold it and italicize that. That's what we're going to do. That's what's going to happen. That's, that's the universe I want to live in. Uh, this is location, right? Location. Oh, yeah, location. Infusion almost got the best of me. We want bold and italic font. Crap. Font. Weight. Bold. And font. Style. Italic. Yeah, both. Uh, I know it's not going to change it, but it's just for consistency purposes. Font size, 1M. Just to have the font size there, in case we ever need to change it. Plus, it'll be able to scale uh, if we indicate the font size as 1M, which is, I think, kind of handy for future use. Regarding whatever different display size it's on, so that's kind of cool. Um, planning ahead. Yeah. Always good thing to do. Refresh. Clickety-click. Auckland Nelson. Yeah. When in Rome. We should change the color of this stuff. On the fly, though. I'm fine if the username is black. We wanted to change... Or no, I'm fine with the full name as black text, but I want to change the username to something else for the color aspect. User. Yeah, yeah. Something, something not gray, that's too subtle. The location can be gray. Location. Color. Gray. We'll still, still use the color wheel to find a, a fun gray. Uh, crap, I always forget. Is it G-R-E-Y or G-R-A-Y? Pretty sure it's a G-R-A-Y. Save, save, save. Although I, I don't think it really matters too much for gray, as people know. In general. Although my favorite is when I get get it wrong entirely with with the A as far as typos and I spell Gary, which is not a color. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh toasty, both work, I think. Yeah, see that's that's what I think. That's what I think. Minus minus the Gary typo. This that that's not gonna help anybody. Gary is not a color, but gray most certainly is, with an A or an E. So save, save, save. Refresh yet again. Clickety-clack. Uh, again, we're going to space these out eventually. This is just kind of an initial theme and feel for each one. Username. We'll just do color black for now, and then break out the color wheel, and we'll just we'll get wild. Yeah. I mean, wild by, by our, st our stream standard, which is uh, like 12 notches below fun. So, color black. You know what? If we do black, we're not going to be able to find it red. I want the color wheel box over here to, to pop out. So, if I just do a black box, I'm going to glance over it, refresh, clickety-clack. Yeah, there you go. So here, okay, what says username? 
orange meerkat. Well, I don't really think that's fair because that starts with a color, so that kind of indicates that it should be orange, which I guess it could be. Grayish orange? No, no, no. No one wants a grayish orange user username. That's that's just weird. So username bright maybe a like a gray a grayish purple. Or red. Different shade of green? No, I think it should be a darker color. Either a grayish blue or a grayish purple. Maybe in between. Blue on the verge of of purple. Burple. That's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for burple, alright? Right around, yeah, yeah, there, there. But the gray section. Because the gray section fades to purple before the vibrant section of blue reaches it. As we go across the slider. So we're going a half notch before purple. In the gray. Yes, yes. Now see here visually it looks fine in the color picker. But it doesn't come off as such, so we're going to need to step back and up to get the color we want by just a bit. I think the vibrancy, having it slightly lighter because it's a darker color to begin with, and we'll shimmy it down. What do you think? Half a, half a click? Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Too much. So not as gray as we thought. Whispers of gray. There we go. There we go. Good times. Good times. Oh, look at that. It's 425 BC1. Of course it was. Of course it was. I always thought it was 425 BC2, but I was mistaken. Color red. And we're pasting, and we're pasting, and let's save that. Good, good, good. You know what? It's still too strong. We should have committed to the gray. Yeah, yeah, nah, mm, mm, mm. No, because then if we, it's too, too gray-y. Nope, do it. Not gray enough. We're looking for a semi gray a happy grim gray. Purple gray on the verge of happiness but still mostly sad. This is a very specific color we're looking for. Here we go. Here we go. Once more. Hey, oh crap. Oh crap, we lost purple. Damn. We paste it in. That's, okay. That's where we're at. Don't mind me. Wanted to get rid of the highlighted text. Okay, and we're clicking, and we're, we're trekking over. Keeping the vibrancy, touch of gray, just a tad darker, and up. This is us, right, right here. 5769B1. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely the right choice. That was definitely the right choice. Copy. And we're pasting. Toasty. Does every username have a color in the font? Start with a color. Oh, clever. Hmm. Although being weird and difficult, I think I'd want to do it based off of the creature that follows the cover, but I don't... I don't know what color rabbit is, aside from just brown. I don't think there's a database 
on the most common animal colors that we can easily reference and link to. So probably sticking with just the first color listed would, would be the way to go. But yeah, we could do, we could be that guy. I was hoping for the common theme though, I was just trying to design the one, but it is still pretty vague and generic. I think I'd change random user to black though if we were ready to go. Change this. Do we want to do that? We could do that. Fascinating. Food for thought. Uh, at least that would have to do something with programming. True, true. Oh no, after, after the last three and a half days of struggling with connecting all the freaking dots for the Ajax request, this is our stress release stream. We saved the CSS nonsense. Or for this, we've been avoiding it. That's why it's been so plain for the last couple days. But we may actually add that in. That is a clever idea. I, I, I could be up for that. Did we add the color? We did add the color. We added it here. We're saving. Clicking out of this noise. We're refreshing. Click. Yeah, awesome. Good, good. That'll turn into a flag. Uh, mail. Age. I don't think we need to do a whole lot with those. I think we will comma them like so. I think we are probably going to end up with basically this. And I don't know if we're going to have them broken down into a section like that. I think they're probably all going to be aligned. I think we may separate the flag a bit more and have the flag icon, the gender icon, and the email icon sort of in a line, relatively close to each other. Now, to do the following, generate user with... Yeah, yeah, we'll use the same. What div is that? Generate user, that's an H3. We're just going to add H1 to this color. Uh, add H3 to the H1 section. Cool, cool, save, 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 save. Save, and we're refreshing. Yeah, there you go. Click on that. Beautiful. Fan-freaking-tastic. So from here, we want to do the following. I want to set... Age after female, and I'm pretty sure I can do that in CSS. I don't know if I should do it in CSS, or I get the feeling it would just be easier to do it in the actual JavaScript. And have it return things user info, plus comma space like this, and just do gender and age, just like that. My concern... is that... My concern is that I'm trying to spend a little more time on the CSS side of things. The CSS side of things has been, I know this is mostly just creative color wheel picking stuff, but we're hopefully going to start getting into it now as one of those things. I, it's been lacking. We, it's kind of, it, at first it was avoiding it, but now we're, we're trying to spend just a little more time to hone that portion of our programming 
skill set. So even though I could just st structure it on the JavaScript side to print out next to each other with a comma and a space like so, I kind of want to see if I can move them. That's why I separated them into their own divs and whatnot. So let's go ahead and try and do that. Which means we get to break into our flex box. Um, to move the following, I should put the two together. Um, we will call it age and gender gene A. This will be its own div. Dee 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 dee. Lie da 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 da. Div. Class. Hmm. I always hate coming up with variables and class names and labels and whatnot. Freaking impossible. Gender and age. Gauge? That's not good. Just, I just want to say human data, but that's not right. I want to do G and A. My cons yep, yep, see, it's red. It hates the and symbol. G and A. Yep, that's as good as it's going to get. That's as good as it's going to get. I know that's weird, but it should be G and A, but no. No, 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 no. G and A. That way, the two lower cases match up with the two things below it. We'll also do ID, G, and A. Crazy person's choice. These two get to be crammed in there as follows. Cut and paste. Awesome. Save, save, save. So G and A will have its own flex box up here. Uh, dot G and A, and we will start off with a display flex, followed by followed by flex direction row. I think it defaults to row. Let's just see what happens when we have this. Save, save, save. Refresh. Yeah, see, look at that. It already put some on a row like that. Cool. Um, I should be more concerned. Oh, oh. Uh, I know where I would add the comma. I know, I know, I know, uh, right? Crap, maybe I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Would it be a paragraph element? I think it would be a paragraph element. I think there's going to be an another div here. And it's going to contain a comma and a space for some reason. I'm going to save it. I don't know if this is actually right, but that's, that's what we're going to do for now. There's a stray comma just living there, acting like it owns the fucking planet. Look at him sitting down there like an idiot. 
I know where we add it. We don't add it there. We do not add it there. This paragraph element can go straight to hell, right back where it came from. Save, save, save. Refresh. And here we add it afterwards. Eh? After gender, because gender's coming first. We do plus quotes and stuff, comma and space. See that? See that? Save. And now, eh, yes, it's been figured it out. I didn't think I would. Brack, why is there no space after it? I put a space. Are we just ignoring the space? I probably need the concatenation after it. I probably need to do another plus sign. Save again. And then I think age will get stacked in front of it. Once more, third wish. Uh-oh. I pissed something off. The JavaScript gods are mad. They don't like the extra space. Typical. Typical. So, let's get rid of the following. Maybe we can put the space before age. We can do this, and then we can do... that i know that's really weird probably messy probably not good and kind of dumb but it, it's all i've got that's that's my solution bear with me uh-huh uh-huh damn why god why Toasty, uh, you don't need the class if you have an ID, by the way. You can even add the comma with CSS. Oh, cool. Uh, W3 schools, okay, okay. Let's, um, let's get, let's get Linky. Let's do that. Uh, as far as the, the class and the IDs go, so that was... All of the projects that I had done so far, this is kind of like a, a transition pro uh, project as they continue to grow with difficulty um, and just sort of the scale of them and what exactly is taking place. All of my projects have been so small that I was basically exclusively using IDs. And I know that I, I should have been using primarily classes for a lot of stuff. Uh, prior to this fifth project, uh, which was about like a, a third of the way through all the projects Topher set up for, for me to, to tackle, um, again, CSS, I noticed was kind of the weak point in my programming skills, um, just because we hadn't like encountered it a lot with the activities and other things we were doing over the last, what, 300 and something days. So... We stumbled across one of these sites recommended to us. It was Flexbox Froggy and Grid Garden to try and get a better. It was a lot of the structural stuff like this on how to align elements. The actual styling portion wasn't too big of a deal, but it was the aligning of the items that was really problematic. Um, and all of that stuff uh, used... Oh well, crap, now I can't remember. I think it was IDs. So I was trying to, uh, no, I guess it was classes. It, it was a lot of class stuff. So one, I was trying to add and transition to using classes primarily to identify things. But for a lot of the things I was using in JavaScript, I was primarily using the document get element by ID as a way of pulling and referencing things and updating crap. 
So that's why I've got both. I know I don't need both, and I probably shouldn't have both. My other concern, because I think it's also looked down upon, is I could have sworn I read that it was looked down upon, uh, is having the class the same exact thing as the ID. And I've got a whole list of that going on here. But since the project is a small enough scope, and I know the code editor isn't going to mistake the two because of the period and the hashes it will know what to do uh this is really human error that would be the dangerous part of having the two named the same um but since i'm using them in two different respective fields slash areas and that means all of the uh i guess ids should be hashes for classes, because that's why we were trying to do all of the classes. Good note. Classes are hashes, right? Pretty sure they're hashes. Now I can't remember. Uh, anyways, that was that sort of tangent as to why all of that's going on. And you did send the handy link, which we will check out. Classes are dots and IDs are hashes. Damn, damn, damn. I'm just a crazy person. Again, the past projects, the hashes seemed right. The dots seemed weird to me because the, what the previous four projects were all exclusively IDs. Damn, damn, damn. Crazy person's choice. Okay. There's that. Let's clickety-clack the link. Closing that noise. Classes are dots. Classes are dots. Good, good, good. Okay. Classes are dots. Dots are classy. Ashes are trashy. We gotta remember that. Dots are classy. Ashes are trashy. Okay, okay, we're going on. Moving, moving onwards. Um, so, paragraph, blah, blah, blah. Insert some text after content of each paragraph element. E, colon, after, content. Remember this. Is that what those double lines are when I see in the code? That's so interesting. I've seen that before whenever I click on random stuff. Like here for the inspect. I've I've seen I mean maybe here isn't a great example, but I've I've seen those dots in in the, the console area before. I could have sworn I have. And I was wondering what those, yeah, see, like this, before, dot, dot, before. So that's what that must be referring to. Interesting. Oh, and they've got it down here, dot, dot, after. Now, maybe it's not to the same degree or extent, because it looks like this would be on the CSS side of things, but anywho, good to know. Insert some text after the content of each. And this is for CSS, the after selector. Okay, cool, cool. Good to know. Uh, we don't need that. No, we don't need this. We do need that. So P after. Hmm. Instead of paragraph after, I bet... I could do age, which means I would want the following. Well, maybe I can do age. I'm hopeful. Age. Wait, no, 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 not age. Gender. Um, 
it will be content, but can I? Is that wrong? Oh my god, after? There's a whole list of cool sh we can do. After, before, first letter? Matches the first letter of the first line of a block if it's not preceded by... This is what Topher was talking about where I could capitalize the first letter of things. Wow. CSS is bitchin'. This is impressive. Huh. Every day, learning something new. 316 days of fun. Kinda awesome. Alright. Um, anyways, can, continuing on. So, content. Makes sense that it would be content. Um. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Da 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 dee da dee da dee da dee do 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 probably quotes because it's a string in a space followed by semicolon and save. Thank you, Toasty, for all of these awesome tips, hints, guidance, hanging out with us. Definitely been greatly appreciated. The guiding light for day three fifth uh three sixteen. Okay, so now, did we save everywhere we needed to? I can't remember if we made a change here. Save, save, save anyways. Save, save, save. And why not? Save up. Oh, we can get rid of this noise. Save. Save. Cool. Here we go. Refresh and clickety-clack. Boom, wow, what is that guy doing in there? Refresh, we still have the stray comma. I thought we killed that guy. This is the new comma. You're different. This could be... Meow, question mark. Save, save, save. Refresh. Look at that. It's sitting there mocking Steven. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Typical. Typical. Son of a. All right. All right. Well, this will work. This will be fine. We can do after and before. I just don't know if it's going to like the space element. I think it's having issues recognizing the space. Try, wait, uh, does it often use, uh, of course, uh, you're welcome, Donka, Donka, Toasty, try and NBSP, and obviously the dot user is visible, even if now use isn't generated, <clears throat> uh, no user, uh, NBSP stands for non-breaking face. Fascinating. And I guess we could just do display none and have it update for when we call it. And again, I, I realize this could be easily fixed and aligned with something like this on the JavaScript side. It's just I am trying to focus and grow the CSS skills. So all of these, even though these are, we'll call them, I, I'm not sure if they're minor or basic. I'm still learning so many basic fundamental things. I'd assume they're minor and basic, uh, but it, it's greatly appreciated. This is awesome. This is exactly the type of stuff that I'm trying to look for and obtain by, by going down the, the CSS path of things for structuring and, and whatnot. So hell yeah. Good times. Um, content. So we will simply do display display none. And then we end up changing over here document content blah 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 
style.display and then we'll change that when it triggers and that'll that'll show it. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. Now, um first things first. So you were saying content do comma I guess we wouldn't do a space. I guess we would do and non breaking space and save that. You know what we'll do display none here. I could have sworn they had maybe they don't none. That's okay. We can key that in. Save, save, save. Um, let's just refresh out of the gates. At least it's gone. And it's because we've got display none. You know what? We should check with display none. Not there because that's crazy talk. But at least we know display none works. Save, save, save. Refresh. Clickety clack. Death. Maybe, maybe it's Steven. Ghosty, inside, oh, uh, sorry, inside CSS, you have to use slash four zeros a zero. Oh, for the, uh, God, what's it called? Is it the internal HTML? Or something to do with HTML. We dealt with all the, the crazy, crazy characters before. Um... I hope that forward slash doesn't cause any issues. It looks like it's going to piss a lot of people off. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, the red's gone. That's good. Uh, four zero a zero or double zero a. I, I think I kind of want to go with just the more formal version out of the gates if that's a thing if not we can do this the the short shorthand version refresh ah it works how cool is that now what does the two zero version look like perfect time to learn and ask clickety clack and both work beautifully well you know I guess an extra two zeros isn't really going to change anyone's day. We might as well go with the shorthand version, at least for now. So here we can uncomment because we want it to be display and um, save, 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 refresh. It's gone. Spectacular random and we are putting that in front of what did we put it in front of it was gender here's a fun question and i'm pretty sure the answer is yes is dot gender is this its own separate beast separate beast from gender after? My gut instinct is yes, because we're telling it, I don't actually think it's affecting gender. I think this is the key, the after portion, just like if we were to do before. Gender is just an anchor point. It's like we could change this to cat. It, it would just change where after is ending up. Just double double checking in scope of life, general life question. Uh, toasty, yes. Okay, cool, cool. Good to know. There's that. Uh, mainly because I wanted to know what to identify over here. Because it's not just gender that's getting its thing dealt with. It will be... It will be 
other stuff. You know what? Let's just type it out because we can't. You know, we have another line already here waiting for us. Like a sign from above. Planning ahead. I'm telling you. Great. Uh, Ghosty. After, uh, colon, colon, after is another selector. Just like, uh, hover and active and other stuff. Noted. Noted. Dot. Dial. Three shirts dot style dot display equals we could just do I think an empty string. Now I can't remember if it's just flex or if we have to put it into quotes. I'm pretty damn sure. I think I remember having a headache type issue or a headache inducing issue and I think it needs to be in quotes. Save, 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 which is why I think I can also, if it does need to be in quotes, that I can leave it just as an empty set of quotes. I don't really want to force the flex there. Uh, also, we need to add in dot gender colon, colon, after. Save, save, save. Uh, if gender is display none, dot after shouldn't be displayed either, I guess. I could see that because it's, it's still tied to it. That makes sense. Or are you talking about gender the whole? Let's find out, because it's going to update. The thing is, it's out of the gates. Oh, you know what? And I'm a crazy person, too. I just realized one of the things that we're going to do is... Let me save this. Update. See how mine is soulless and empty? There's nothing here when you just start from scratch. I'm going to be changing that. So I'm correcting an issue that's not going to be a problem in the future. I'm, I'm building a bridge where there's not going to be a need for a bridge in the future. So here, when we refresh Topher's project, out of the gates, ta-da, it auto-calls someone. So I don't need to deal with the whole, this particular nightmare. I'm glad we did. But, but that's, that's not actually going to be a problem. So, good to know, because ours, when we call it, eventually, it will, it will make the call and pull in someone out of the gates, out of the blue, and then we'll just be good to go from there. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, oh, okay, hold on, I see. Toasty. After is another selector, just like hover and active and stuff. If gender is display none, colon after, or colon colon after, shouldn't be displayed either. I guess. There is no element with the ID crap you're right. There is no element with the ID after. So, there's only the element with the ID gender. Wrap. But again, this problem doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because this problem won't exist in the future. Because we're going to find out how to call it tomorrow. Don't mind me. Apologize for all the undoing. Perfect. Save, 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 save. This is simply good test for tomorrow. Or not, not well, yeah, I guess tomorrow. That's probably when we'll set it up. Uh, refresh. 
this in general is how it will be, which is mostly perfect for now. For stylizing, general stylizing, this is what we're shooting for. It's cool. The comma and the space can just hang out. They'll be there. It's a thing. And then uh, when we set up the... I guess we'll just be calling the function out of the gates to to do all that, to call a person. Um, yeah. Things will happen. I guess we can have... XHR out of the gates up here. Isn't that sort of weird? Man. Poppy. Is it wrong to have it just floating around up here like that? Is like the first thing that'll happen? Maybe it needs to go outside the larger... No, no, it doesn't need to go outside that. Save, save, save. I think I'm crazy. I think I'm ruining things. Oh my god, it f***ing worked. Did you see that? When I refresh the page, it just happens. I did it. Oh, that's so cool. It worked. I just set it here and it runs. No? No one else? Okay. I'm excited enough. And now it's there. And now it's awesome. Yeah. Cool. This is great. This is like those YouTube videos of, of animals discovering their tails. Like kittens when they find their tails or dogs. Yeah, that's, that's me. That's what I just did. Look at, I found, I found my JavaScript that I typed out down here. And I just, it, I put it here. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Uh, this is fantastic. All right. I think we're pretty good. I think we're just going to land this bird. Ah, uh, we can do the buttons. You know what? Screw it. Let's save the buttons for tomorrow. Let's let's end this. Let's call it a night. Uh, Toasty, have a good night, son. Thank you. Thank you for all the help, Toasty. You're a rock star for taking it out and guiding us and explaining things through our confusion. So helpful. So greatly, greatly appreciated. You enjoy the rest of of your day. Okay, let's uh let's commit and and save this. No, commit and push to GitHub. That's what we want to do. I want to be that guy. Save, save, save. One can never save too much. Cool, cool. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And now we go to, yeah, we can crack GitHub open here. And we want the desktop version of GitHub. Hold the phone. Loading things. That's better. That's better. What did we do? We did, we added, added CSS stuff. Added. CSS stuff. Copy. And we're pasting. Commit to master. And push. Resolving deltas. Yeah, nice. Bitchin'. Let's close out of that noise. Close out of this. Crack that open, back into that, and we can double check. Yeah, 24 seconds ago, all three files. Fan frickin' tastic. Good times. Let's back out of this into OBS. Thank you again to anyone and everyone who stopped by to view the stream and or assist and help out. Today we had uh, Toasty uh, Saucy Clouds. Or Claude's, one of those. There's a lot of A and U's in that. And Yum Yum, of course. Um, and thank you to anyone else who may have accidentally stumbled in here. Any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. 
uh, day 316 comes to an end. However, the adventure continues tomorrow with day 317 of the year of streaming and learning to code. In the meantime, are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.